Will quantum computers affect our jobs, our security? When I asked Charles Dwan, director of tech and innovation at R Street Institute, the answer blew my mind. It kind of scared me. Charles, quantum computing, we know is exciting, but even more than that, it's confusing for a lot of us. So the basics in your mind of what quantum computing is and what it's useful for, could you give me the basics? Yeah, of course. So, you know, I've got two kids. Um, I got two boys. They're kind of a handful. And the way I like to think about quantum computing is what I wish I could be as a parent in every place at the same time. Okay. The real thing about <laughs> quantum computing is that, you know, normally when you have a computer, it can do one task at a time. The advantage of quantum computing is that each of the bits in the computer, instead of just being set to one or zero, it can be set to both of them at the same time, which means that the computer can essentially do multiple things at the same time. Once you start multiplying up all of the bits, that means it can be doing thousands or millions or billions of operations in one step that a single computer, that a normal computer would have taken many more steps. We often hear quantum computing come up when you're talking about China and this technological arms race. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as competitive advantage, do you think it's going to be as important as people are stating right now? So it definitely could be, depending on how the technology works out. The, real, the really interesting application, potentially problematic application about quantum computing, is that if you can do multiple things at once, what that means is, you know, if you have a, if you have a lock, for example, you want to you wanna break the lock, mm -hmm. you've got to try each key one at a time. If a quantum computer can try all the keys at once, you can break locks almost encryption. instantaneously. And that's going to break encryption, that's going to break financial transactions, that's going to break internet commerce, right? Lots and lots of potential problems. If, if this technology is primarily in the hands of, let's say, China, that they would just be able to tap into anything at any time and take it is a big deal. And then I think of military, that's an mm -hmm. even bigger deal. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people are really, really interested in what's going to happen with quantum technologies and there's sort of this race for quantum technology in the same way that you know people talk about the race for 5G and the race for AI. Now, the advantage is that quantum technology is much, much earlier, um, earlier stage technology at this point. In order for it to really be useful, we need machines with you know thousands of bits right now um, in order to actually break encryption or something. Right now, the research is barely breaking 100 bits. So we've got, a, we've got a ways to go. And the problem is it's a very difficult thing to do. In order to get a quantum computer to work, you have to get it really, really cold, like almost absolute zero. Um, like temperature-wise? Yeah, temperature-wise. So you know, this is colder than space, right? And you, know, you, need to, you need to basically isolate it from the rest of the universe to make sure that you know, vibrations in the room or something right. like that don't cause problems with computers. So this is a very difficult problem that a lot of physicists are working on, but it means that I think we're still a pretty good ways away from you know, the sort of doomsday scenarios that people have brought up. Could we one day have quantum computers in our homes, or is this really something that only businesses in the government will need? So it's hard to say, but I think the important thing to remember is that there was also a time when we thought that computers were going to be things that businesses only sure. need, right? We would just have these big mainframes and, you know, at home, like, who would need this sort of thing? Yeah. The thing is that you don't know what sort of applications technologies will bring along with them. And when a technology like quantum computing comes along, you know, there will obviously be a lot of things that we have to deal with, including the encryption issue, but we'll probably also discuss some really interesting applications for it, which may end up having really important consumer benefits. Wow. So, you know, I mean, I can't, I can't predict what that is, but I'm certainly excited for the future.